editorial content. Um, and then downstream, I use it as a research tool and a, a tool to sort of get news and information about what I want to cover and communicate with my viewers and get feedback from them. So slightly different from the normal business sense, but as part of my role for the BBC, I've spent the last 10 years looking at the internet and what's happening on the internet and reporting on it for the consumers. Um, and so I have kind of strange insight on social media. Um, and the raw is absolutely deafening. The raw of social media, the number of us communicating and speaking and the noise that we're making on social media has grown to such an extent that it, it, it defies any kind of sensible predictions now. We can't do it. Never mind Moore's Law, which predicts that every two years the processing speed will grow uh, by double. But actually, social media, the latest estimate, estimates um, say that we're doubling every two days the amount of content and noise that we're making on social media. 4,000 tweets per second, this was just a couple of years ago, obviously, a few years ago, this was the royal wedding, the kiss. Just last week in the World Cup, yeah, Germany yeah. versus Brazil, we're approaching 10,000 tweets per second. <coughs> that one snapshot and moment in time. So, where I'm going with this is, in a kind of roundabout way, I'm going to agree with nothing in the automation sense, but in a very specific way, because for me, and I think for many people now, we are drowning in data, and we need to make sense of that data. And unless you find some way of automating the insight and the process from that data, then you may as well not be listening. So, you know, this chap, you can't hear you over how awesome he is. And I think a company that doesn't want to take advantage of that insight is going to lose out in the long run. So it's got to be about automating the understanding of our social sphere and our influence. But at the same time, really importantly, relating human with our interactions. That's, I'm teaching my grandmother to suck eggs here, right? You all know that. Um, the other thing that we know is there's no more free lunches. You know, everybody needs to monetize now. Um, Facebook has investors. They need to make sure that they're turning a profit. Um, and they've actually started to help their natural, um, sorry, to hinder their natural um, algorithm uh, to hurt organic reach. So you've got to pay now if you want to get seen in Facebook. Mm -hmm. Twitter is a public company. It has to derive revenues. We're seeing promoted tweets. And Google Plus is introducing ads. So now it's much more difficult as a content creator or a marketer to actually get seen on social media unless you've got deep pockets. <coughs> and so you've got to start thinking about how you become, oh, nice bit forward one. Um, so you've got to start thinking about how you become, um, uh, add more value to your interactions. And this really is, um, I think, a resurgence of, of, of advertorial, paid advertorial. You've got to start making editorial content that engages your customers and your consumers in order to interest them in your brand, unless you want to pay through the nose from the classic advertising. The age of advocacy is well and truly here, and I, I don't normally put so many words on that on the slide, but I really like this quote, which is, influence isn't about impressions, it's about impacting someone's behaviour. And the only way to impact the behaviour of others is through passion, relevance and trust. Genuine organic love for a brand influences behaviour far more than paid promotion. It's not a numbers game anymore. You know, I remember the start of social media, it was all about how many people followed you and how many numbers you had to throw out there into the atmosphere doesn't count anymore. If somebody's following 10,000 people on Twitter, they're not seeing what I'm posting unless it just flashes at the right moment. So you need to start thinking about the balance of the numbers, and I think uh, Automated Insight will help you to see some really interesting platforms that tell you who your genuine influencers are and who the people who are worth concentrating your effort on. And it's great to hear John and several other people talking about in the corporate space how employee advocacy, because lower down the, the food chain in the corporate, corporate world, I see a lot of companies who are terrified of having their, their, their employees tweet or share content about them because they can't control it. And so we're going to see employee advocacy platforms being a really big thing in the future. 